What's up YouTube? Back again with another video. In today's video, I wanted to touch on home theater basics and things to consider as you build your home theater. I will go through a top five list of items to consider and share my thoughts on each of those and what, how I approached it and what I did. Before I get started, I did want to say thank you for everyone's feedback on my home theater man cave tour video. Appreciate all the feedback, the subscriptions, and the likes on that video. Uh, definitely enjoy making these video for you guys. So thank you. All right, let's get started. Top five items to consider when building a home theater. Number five is budget. Definitely budget is very important. Uh, so what I would say is, as you're putting your budget together, definitely consider, you know, what approach you want to take. Do you want that full home theater experience? Uh, what I mean by that is a projection screen and the sound. Are you looking more for a family room? So basically set realistic goal for your home theater. So as far as the way I approached it is I wanted a home theater. Uh, I've, I previously had a, you know, a surround sound system in my living room. And I told myself, you know, for my next home, I want a home theater experience. So I set aside a budget and you know, depending on what you purchase and the equipment you use, it can get quite expensive, but there is ways to still be on a budget and still get a great experience at home uh, without spending a lot of money. So here's a couple of tips. The projector and screen are gonna be important because that's, you know, that's gonna be your your picture, your video that you're going to be watching. So that's pretty important. I would say definitely look into um, that options and what you want to do there. I'll touch a little bit more later in the video as to what I did for projector and screen. And then the next important, as far as speaker goes, the most important speaker is your center channel. The center channel is going to be doing a lot of the sound and voice it's going to be your primary speaker so i recommend that you you know dedicate a little bit of your your money to that center channel that's going to be one of the most important speakers you purchase and then the next important speakers are your left and right speakers they produce the, you know, most of the other sound that you hear in movies. So those are important as well. As far as the other speakers go, like your surrounds, your left and right surround, any ceilings, Dolby Atmos speakers, all of those, you necessarily don't have to spend a lot of money on that. Uh, those speakers receive some of the sound and they're not frequently on like these front speakers are. So you don't have to quite spend too much money on that. Uh, if you're on a budget, you can, you can, you know, spend most of the money on the front speakers. All right, uh, I'm gonna move on to number four. Number four is appearance or aesthetics of your home theater. Definitely decide what you're after. If you want your room to look like a home theater, uh, do you wanna go with a theme? Uh, definitely just consider all that, that's important. For my home theater, I wanted it to look like a home theater, so I went with a dark paint in my room. And then also, since the room is a dedicated home theater, in other words, it's not in my living room. I wanted to do something different and give it a little touch, which is the reason I did a abstract sound wave along the back. 
So definitely, you know, look at different ideas. A lot of great ideas out there by YouTube members. Hey everyone, uh, there's been some fantastic home theaters. So uh, yeah, that's part of the fun is building a home theater and making it your own. Okay, number three. Now we get to the good stuff. Number three, I'm gonna say speakers. Speakers is very overwhelming. There's so many options out there, so many. So here's the things to consider for speakers. The first question you ask yourself is, do you want ceiling mounted speakers? There's also wall mounted speakers. There's floor standing speakers. So that's a decision that you will have to make. And here's my thoughts on each of those to help you guys out. Ceiling mounted speakers. Ceiling mounted speakers, in my opinion, are meant to kind of hide the speaker. Like if you mount them up in the ceiling, you necessarily don't want to see the speaker. And that's a very important for some people. You know, they want a very clean look. They want to just have the screen at the front and then try to get away from having any speakers visible. So that's an option if that's something you want to do. But as far as sound goes, that's not the best option. I, uh, the speakers are still going to sound good, but you know, the sound is being projected down instead of out towards the, the listener so you're not gonna get the optimal sound with that solution so i wanted to kind of give my thoughts on that one and then wall mounted speakers wall mounted and floor mounted i'll talk i'll touch on both of those at the same time so the perception after looking you know at different videos is you're gonna see that a lot of people recommend floor mounted speakers towers because they provide the most optimum sound it may be true but i do want to mention that wall mounted like i have here recess mounted if you buy a good speaker i would say you still get great sound out of it um like this speaker here it's the klipsch lcr 5502 this speaker is meant for left and right. So if you get the right speaker, you can still get some great sound out of it. Because this speaker is meant for that. Um, and then also, as far as floor mounted speakers go, they do produce the, you know, probably the best sound. But once again, you have to buy the right speaker. You know, the floor mounted speakers have a speaker box. So they're designed to, you know, use that speaker box to produce that great immersive sound. But from my experience, I actually did purchase floor mounted towers. I purchased the Klipsch R820Fs, which is a eight inch, two eight inch woofer speaker. Those things were huge when they when they arrived and I installed them. Um, so one thing I noticed is they were real bulky in my room. My room was it's not that big. Uh, my room is like a 15 by 15, I want to say. And I noticed the, in that corner, I had it in the corner. They were huge. And then the sound, I don't think I was maximizing the sound. I think my receiver my Denon receiver probably did not provide enough wattage because I noticed it just wasn't very immersive. It um, it did sound great, but I just didn't feel like it's like it didn't blow me away. So that's just my opinion. Um, like as I mentioned, I probably didn't have the right receiver for it. So that when, when um, after listening to it, I was like, you know. I'm gonna look into other speakers because I just, it just didn't feel, it didn't sound right to me. So I looked into these guys 
the LCR. And uh, for my room, I think this worked better for me. It's, it gives it a clean look, uh, it's not bulky. And then um, I was able to mount them at a, you know, more of a ear level height. So that's a nice thing about uh, wall mounted speakers. You have more control where you mount them. So one thing about these LCR speakers is they come with two five and a half inch woofers and then they have this pivoting horn tweeter, like it pivots. So I'm able to pivot to the listening position. So it's nice, as I was mentioning, it's made for wall mounted speakers. So it's nice that uh, it has that feature. Okay, uh, center channel I touched on earlier is very important. I would um, definitely spend some money on a great quality center channel. And then as far as the surround sounds, I chose the Klipsch surround sound that's, that has this angle design because the angle helps the sound go towards your seating area. As far as surround sound goes, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it's really up to you. Um, you don't have to spend the, a lot of money on these. I mean, they make a lot of different options like the Klipsch line, they make the reference premiere line and then they make the reference line. For the surrounds, I don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money for those. So it's really up to you what you're looking for. But definitely be careful and not purchase a surround sound speaker and install it in the front for as your front speaker. So keep that in mind. Um, you can, and I've seen it done, but you know, it's probably not the most optimum solution if you install if you install a surround sound speaker as your front speaker. So just keep that in mind, do a little bit of research for that one. All right, I think I touched on speakers for a long time. Oh, one last thing on speakers. Uh, the subwoofer. The subwoofer, I think it's recommended to go with two subs just to even out the base. I only have one sub at the moment. I'm pretty happy with the one sub. It sounds good in here. I mean, my room is not that big. It does sound really good. It shakes the room. Um, I'm able to hear it from anywhere I sit. But, you know, in the future, I may go with two subs. Well, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right, next one. Number two is projector. For the projector, there is several options out there and they can be expensive. There's probably the low tier, the mid tier, and the real high tier. Like some of those projectors get, they get really expensive. And I'll tell you some quick um, differences between them all. So the reason for the difference in prices is number one, 1080p versus 4K. And then the next item is contrast. Contrast is important. Contrast is important depending on how your room is. Because if you're in a ambient light room, for example, like a living room that may have windows, then it's going to affect your projector quality. Uh, if you have light in your room, any kind of light, it will affect your projector. But they do make projectors that address that with uh, brightness, lumens, and contrast ratio. If that's your situation, if you have uh, any kind of lighting in your room. Okay, for my situation is I have a dedicated home theater so I'm able to just completely turn off the lights and watch a movie. But I still went with a nice mid-tier 
projector because you know I wanted to go in as a home theater and I wanted to uh, future proof myself as much as I could so I went with the Epson 4K 4010 which is I would say a mid-tier projector it's actually really great for me because like I said this is a dark room the lumens is great the color is vibrant that's the thing that really stands out for me uh, with this projector it's real vibrant colors I would say as you're looking at projectors check out the color quality and uh, brightness and contrast the contrast level for this projector is good probably not the greatest but it's good um, like I said if you want great contrast you gotta spend some serious money but I would say this is a good one as a mid-tier I, I, I don't even want to call it mid-tier because it's actually really good so I'll quickly show you guys on my screen so this is what it looks like with light in here see I have all my lights on right now the picture looks a little washed you're still able to see it, it just looks washed. But check it out, when I turn off the lights, see that? Big difference. With the lights off, you get that nice vibrant colors, the blacks, contrast. It looks amazing. It, um, it looks as good as watching it on TV. Like, it feels like you're watching a TV. They, the technology today on projectors is amazing. The very sharp, this 4K projector looks sharp. You can read every single word, subtitle, everything real clear. So as I mentioned, um, I wouldn't even call it a mid-tier. It looks great with the lights off, fantastic. Um, now I'm gonna move on to my number one is the screen. As we're looking at the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the screen. So home theaters, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, do you wanna go with a projection screen or do you wanna go with a TV? Uh, nowadays, TV's technology is awesome and the price have gone down dramatic. You can get, um, 85 inch TV, which is kind of the biggest one that's, you know, available uh, at a store. Obviously they make bigger ones, but it's probably like special order. So 85, I think is the highest one. If you get an 85 inch QLED, you know, the not the low end TV, but more of the upper TV, high end TV, QLEDs or NanoCell or the X900 Sony's, you know, like those nice LED HDR TVs. The price of that TV, I'm gonna tell you, is pretty much the same price of a 4K projector and screen combo. The price is pretty much the same, slightly different, but very similar. So that's why you have to make the decision. Do you wanna go with a TV or a 4K projector slash screen combo? you're gonna spend the same price. The TV is probably better in picture quality because of the contrast and you know, like I've mentioned earlier, high-end HDR. But the screen gives you that home theater experience. So they both have their pros and cons. So you gotta ask yourself, do you want the home theater experience? I mean, the technology is great for home theaters or do you want that great HDR look from a TV the projector itself has HDR as well but I'll be honest this doesn't match up with a TV maybe if you spend a lot of money on a projector you could probably get it close to a LED TV or old LED TV but you're talking like a lot of money on that projector. So, um, so yeah, that's a decision to make. But 
for me, I feel that a projection screen was best for me. I mean, look at how sharp it is. So sharp. And if you stand back, you get that home theater experience, 120 inches. Massive. Massive. So it's really up to you guys. Um, just wanted to kind of give you some of my thoughts, some tips to consider. Definitely be check out several YouTube videos from other members to give you ideas, get their thoughts. But um, hopefully uh, I helped some of you guys out as you're building your home theaters. Kind of things to consider, watch out for, you know. I wanted to just be, be real with you guys and tell you like, hey, um, as I mentioned, TV is a great option, but check out this option as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely wanted to help you guys out. But um, thanks for watching. I think that wraps up the video. Hopefully yeah, everyone enjoyed watching the video and appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Peace.